Psalms 100 verse 1 to 5. The Bible says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, O ye lands. It is the responsibility of even the land to make a joyful noise into our God. That is why we were created. That's why we are here. To worship Him. To praise Him. That's what we will do when we go to heaven. To praise God. To praise God. To worship God. Because we are His creation. What do you feel when you are praising God? When you are worshipping, what do you feel? Personally, when I'm worshipping God, nothing else matters. It gives me a lot of peace. It gives me a lot of joy. Because I'm functioning as I was created to function. That's what I was created to do. It's very important. And it has its benefits. We are not here to discuss that today. As a topic of another day. The benefits of worshipping and praising God. There are so many. So many. So uh, every time I talk about. And I, when I hear people saying that when we go to heaven. Uh, all that we will do there is to worship God and to praise God I feel like some people feel like that is slavery did God create us just to be bowing to him and to be praising him no, nobody will force you to do that because of the goodness of God there you will just want to praise him because of how good he is and because of how lucky and how blessed you will feel. It will just be an automatic um, flow of gratitude from your heart. It is something that will just come out of you and you just find yourself bowing and worshipping God. So it will not be by co uh, co coercion or by force. It will not be out of duty it will be because of reciprocating reciprocating the love and the goodness of God hallelujah even right now nobody can be able to praise God if they have not seen the goodness of God it is not possible to worship and to praise God and to be glad and to be glad yeah, without having seen the goodness of God having seen the kindness of God let's continue with this scripture verse 3 know ye that the Lord he is God it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves you see that is also another reason that you find yourself, you know, praising and worshipping God and serving God gladly. Because you know that everything you have, He is the one who gave it to you. He is the creator of every good thing in your life. Amen. We are His people and the sheep of His pastor. Go to verse 4. He says, Now, when you know that, you enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name when do you thank a person you thank a person after they've done something for you isn't it yes 
So God is not telling us to thank him because he has done nothing. Just because he created us. No. Apart from being created of which is something big. It's something big. Let me tell you something. Maybe we can go back to biology a little bit. Do you know there, are, there were so many seeds that were before you and after you? So many seeds. Millions and millions. Imagine you are just a seed. One seed that got lucky. <laughs> and you become you became a human being. One seed, just like one seed like this that got lucky and you found yourself here. There were so many seeds ahead of you, so many as, as seeds behind you, but yours was chosen by God. Amen. Imagine if you were never chosen. Imagine if you were never born. Imagine if you were never born. So is that not something? Yes, even life itself is something and a reason and a big one to give God all the glory. So let's continue, verse 5, the last one. For the Lord is, God, is good. For the Lord is good. The reason you are thanking God it is because he is good. Hasn't he been good to you? Even to see you this morning, it has taken the hand of God. God is good that I can see you. You don't know what I'm saying. The fact that I am able to see you, that is a blessing. There are people that were born with good eyes and everything, but after some time, something happened and they are not able to see anymore. Oh, the fact that I am able to see you, it's a blessing. The fact that I'm able to hear you, it's a blessing. It's a big blessing. The fact that you brought yourself here, eh, you came by your own. It's a big blessing. The fact that your mind is still working, it's a blessing. For the Lord is good. Lift up your hand and say, my father, my God. Today, 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 I acknowledge you. I worship you. I praise you because you are good to me. I realize, I acknowledge, I recognize your goodness in my life. The Bible says his mercy is everlasting. Can you imagine the things you do every day and God has not decided to kick you out, kick you away. He's still accommodating you. He's still loving you. You know yourself, isn't it? You know how wicked sometimes you are. You know how unreliable sometimes you are. You know how sometimes you don't even pray. You, you are just here by, by God's grace. By God's grace. Sometimes you even feel like you are living just by chance. By accident. <laughs> Amen. His mercy hmm, endures what? Forever. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Nobody can worship God. Nobody can be happy. Nobody can praise God. Nobody can serve God. If they have not found a reason a reason to serve him. A reason to worship him. A reason to pray. You cannot even come to church when you do not have a reason, a good reason. If you have not seen God as a good God. So it is important for us to be able to realize the goodness of God in our lives. It is very important. If you are going to grow in the Lord, it is very important that you get to realize the goodness of God in your life. Amen. And that is something that we, we will not do for you. It's something that you're going to do it by yourself and for yourself. You remember the scripture that says test or taste 
and see that the Lord is good. Let's see this. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of what? Of peace. And of what? Not of evil. And to give you what? Unexpected. And give us from um, NIV. NIV. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That is the will of God for you. The will of God for you is for you to live in peace. The desire of God for your life is that there will be peace in your life. Somebody say peace. Say I embrace peace. Say I receive the peace of God. You cannot grow in the Lord if there is no peace in your life. It is not possible. It is not possible. When the children of Israel were in captivity. Though they held on to their God. The truth is. They were not growing. They were not growing. Like they were not. They were not manifesting. Or demonstrating. Their relationship with God. It was not possible for them to preach to anybody about their God. It was not possible for them to worship their God freely. Actually, they were never given the opportunity to worship God. When people are bound, when people are in captivity, when people lack peace, it is not possible for them to express themselves before God. It is actually not possible for them even to pray and to worship and to, to praise God. It becomes difficult for you to worship God, to praise God, to serve God, to expand the kingdom of God, to spread the love of God when you are in captivity. It is not possible for you to help another person realize the goodness of God when you yourself is not happy. It is not possible. So the desire of God is for us, the children, uh, his children, to live in peace. He says, I know the plans I have. There is something I'm doing to make sure that you live in peace. Every day I am concerned about your peace. May God give you peace today. I say, may the Lord give you peace today. Amen. <laughs> Isaiah 26 verse 3. Let's read. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. God is always concerned about the peace of his people. He says, if you stay focused on him, if you wait on him, if you continue trusting him, he will give you peace. He will make sure that you stay in peace. And that is the will of God. The will of God for his people is that they will continue staying in peace. That they will continue staying in peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Atakueka katika amani ya ukweli. Amani thabiti. Mungu anataka tukue na amani kamilifu katika maisha yetu. Praise the Lord. Si Mungu atupatia amani katika hii kanisa. Kanisa ambayo haina amani haiwezi ka grow. Watu wa Mungu wakikosa amani hawezi waka grow, hawezi wakainuka. We cannot grow if we don't have peace. Lift up a hand and say my father my maker. As we worship you today, as we pray today, pour your peace upon our lives in this church, 
in Jesus name yeah we need peace peace is very important hallelujah Matthew chapter 6 verse 31 He says, this is why I want to take care of your needs. So that you don't have to worry. So that you don't have to worry. Because a worried man is very difficult for them even to serve God. A worried man. He says, therefore take no thought. In other words, do not worry. Stop worrying. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or whither wall? Shall we be clothed? Hmm. Imagine. Therefore, take no thought. He says, Do not think about it. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or where we thought shall we be clothed? Why are, where are we going to get all these things? God is saying, do not worry about it. I don't want you to worry about it. I don't want you to worry about where the people will come from. I don't want you to worry about how uh, this branch is going to, to happen. Where are we going to get the sound? Where are we going to get the materials to build? Where are we going to get, uh, you know? Hmm. Where are we going to get this? Where are we going to get that? So God is saying, do not even think about it. Because I am taking care of it. So it is the will of God for us to have abundance. It is the will of God for us to have more than enough so that we don't have to worry because God knows the moment we begin worrying we shall not be able to serve him we cannot focus on serving God when our minds are full of worry when our minds are full of worry you cannot be able to stay in the house of God and focus on God focus on the word focus on the spirit we can pray so much like James was leading us in the morning for us to connect. But if our minds are full of things, full of worry, it is not possible for us to uh, completely focus and connect into the spirit. So it is my prayer this morning that each one of us, God will take away that worry. That God will take away our worries in the mighty name of Jesus and I want to believe that God wants to give us abundance that's why he says in verse 33 that when we focus on him, when we do what? when we focus on him, when we connect to him then all these other things that worry us are going to begin following us but out of experience and from experience you find that many people when they have things that uh, they worry about things they need in their lives to get to the point where they can be able to concentrate on seeking God alone seeking God and the kingdom of God becomes a problem amen so my conclusion is nobody can grow when they are worried nobody can grow in the Lord when they are worried. When they are worried. And that's why this morning and today I want us to deal with uh, this subject I'm calling overcoming depression. Overcoming depression. Overcoming the spirit of depression. Overcoming the spirit of depression. Because when you are worried, when you are stressed, when you are depressed, when you are stressed, 
it is not possible for you to focus on God. It is not possible for you to grow in the Lord. So, if you are going to make up your mind to seek God, then deliberately you need to deal and do something about the spirit of depression. The spirit of depression or worry. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I refuse to worry. Say, I refuse to be depressed. In the name of Jesus. Say the Lord will take care of me. Amen. <laughs> Alright. Write this down. Number one. Depression is a weapon. The enemy uses to kill motivation for growth. These are just some uh, definition. Or rather the effect of worry or depression. Some effects of depression. depression. So depression is a weapon the enemy uses to kill motivation. The devil knows that no one can grow when they are depressed. So they introduce depression to hinder you from growing. The enemy introduces depression. He introduces depression into your life to make sure that your motivation for growth is completely dead. Completely dead. So depression introduces carelessness and laziness. When people are depressed, they no longer care about nothing. You find that when people are depressed, they don't even care about their lives anymore. They don't care about their jobs anymore. They don't care about their children anymore. They don't care about their families anymore. They don't care about going to church. They don't care about their spirituality they don't care about prayer anymore. They don't care about, you know, reading and studying the word of God anymore. So, depression introduces carelessness in your life. So, when you find yourself not caring about the word, not caring about prayer, not caring about going to church, not caring about your family, not caring about your responsibilities, there is a life Likelihood that you are depressed. Maybe you know it or maybe you don't know it. Depression is a spiritual condition but it is also a mental condition. It is medical and it is spiritual. Yeah. So they can give you some medication but if it is spiritual also, <laughs> medication will also not help you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It is an attack. It is a spiritual attack. Depression is a spiritual attack that kills your motivation to grow. A spiritual attack that kills your motivation to grow. The devil, when the devil don't want you to cross a certain level, to go beyond a certain level in life, he introduces depression. He makes sure that you are disappointed, discouraged, stressed. He makes sure that people who are supposed to encourage you, they discourage you. Just to introduce some level of, you know, depression. To make sure that he kills your motivation to grow and to move forward in life. But I declare here today, in the name of Jesus, that God will give you the strength to overcome the spirit of depression. Are you shouting a believing amen? Hallelujah. So it introduces carelessness. It also introduces laziness. You become lazy. You become lazy. You don't want to pray. You don't want to. You don't want anything. You don't want. You just want to be there. You just want to be there. You don't want to pray. You don't want to talk to anybody. You don't want to go anywhere. You just want to stay in the house. Depression has already attacked you. 
depression somebody say i'm overcoming the spirit of depression yes yes it makes you feel whatever you do will not make a difference so why should i even try why should i even try when all i do will not make any difference so the devil replace in your mind the many times you've tried to solve and fix your life and nothing happened he replays it over and over and over and over again so he preaches to you and convinces you that no matter what you do in this life no matter what you try it will not change your life so why bother so why bother the prayers i have prayed many years all this time i've been praying since i got saved i've been praying nothing has changed so why continue pray so why bother pray all this fasting i've been fasting and nothing is changing in my life why bother why bother that is the spirit of depression attacking you hallelujah and when it does when it does attack you nothing to you matters nothing to you matters you, you don't want to do anything because at the end of the day there will be no any difference so why should i even try i will not even give again because it doesn't make sense it doesn't change my life nothing happens when i do nothing happens when i do and, and that is the weapon the enemy uses the enemy uses to hinder you from getting past a certain level in life today in the name of jesus i declare because we have discovered him he has no power over you again i say he has no power over your mind again he has no power over your life again the bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free may this truth set you free today i say may this truth begin to set you free in the mighty name of jesus So one of the symptoms of depression is giving up. Giving up. Giving up. Giving up. Giving up on the on development, giving up on growth, giving up on things that can help you grow giving up on development that is how to know that you are depressed when you begin to give up on things that can help you grow things that can develop your life things that can take you uh, move your life forward things that can take you to the next level you begin to give up on listening to the word you give up on going to church you give up on you know reading the word you give up on prayer these are things that can help you move and grow but now the enemy has introduced a weapon that will make sure that you will give up and that you will not focus on these things that are supposed to expand your life that are supposed to bless you that are supposed to take your life to the next level i pray today that god will restore you that god will restore your peace I pray that God will restore your peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your hand and say my father my God, I receive your peace today. I receive your peace today in the mighty name of Jesus. Number 2. So that was number 1, which is depression is a weapon the enemy uses to kill motivation for growth. Number 2 depression is a weapon of the enemy to destroy the desire for life desire for life when you begin to lose desire for life just to know that you've been attacked by the spirit of depression when you begin to contemplate suicide when you begin to think of uh killing yourself or just wanting to die some people because they are born again they will not uh contemplate suicide 
but they will just lose meaning for life they will lose the meaning for life that is the spirit of depression when you find yourself you're tired tired of life tired of living you are just waiting for god to take you you're even desiring that jesus would return now just know that you've been attacked by the spirit of depression it is a very easy uh it's a very easy way of making sure that believers will not live up to uh they are designed or they are uh ordained span of life because there is what god has prepared for you there is what god wants you to do within the timeline that he has given to you in this world but the devil uses depression to cut that short i decree in the name of jesus that nobody here will die prematurely so it becomes very easy for you to commit suicide even born again christians have committed suicide before because of depression somebody say i will not die prematurely say again i refuse to die prematurely So when someone is depressed you realize that someone is depressed try to encourage them try to be close to them and to encourage them try to be close to them and encourage them So if it is you who is this uh depressed try to find a way you can be encouraged try to find some people who can encourage you amen and sometimes we encourage ourselves you remember david saying he encouraged i encouraged myself in the lord he encouraged himself in the lord you remember that eh yes in first samuel chapter 30 verse 6 he encouraged himself he encouraged himself in the lord glory to god so avoiding judging people when you notice they are depressed that's something else don't trigger their you know uh, so, some people can really make uh, make you feel even worse than you were before so when you meet somebody who is depressed make sure that you avoid judging them Let's go to 1st King chapter 19 verse 4. Elijah was very anointed, a man of God, a man who walked with God. Mm-hmm. A man that loved God. But at some point he got depressed and desired to end his life. So nobody can say that I am immune to a discouragement to worry it is the desire of god that you don't worry but nobody is immune anybody can get uh, discouraged and depressed let's read but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a janipa tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said it is enough now o lord take away my life for i am i am not better than my fathers so it uh, takes away the meaning of your life depression takes away the meaning of your life it causes you to feel like you are useless like you have no use in this world i am here to let you know that you are very very important don't die you are very important at least if you lack to see any meaning for your life you have a meaning to us you have a meaning to the kingdom of god you have a meaning uh, to you know to the society around you so stick around something will happen things will change things will turn out for your good are you shouting a believing amen 
Are you shouting a believing amen? Yes, you will not die in depression. I say you will not die in depression. I say you will not die in depression. That worry will not take you to your grave. I say that worry will not take you to your grave. So we see that uh, Elijah lost interest of living. Even lost interest of his ministry. He wondered why am I doing this? And he told God just take me. He lost the interest. He lost interest even of his ministry. His assignment. He wondered why am I struggling? Why am I serving? Why am I doing this work? So sometimes when you find yourself not able to serve God it is because you are suffering from the spirit of depression. When you find yourself you are not motivated enough to come to church early. Motivated enough to come and spend time in the house of God. Come for Kesha. Come for the services. You, something is pushing you to stay or pulling you in, in the house to stay there. That means that the spirit of depression has taken hold of you but today we declare by faith and on this altar by the power that is given to us that you will come out of that depression that depression will not kill you depression will not kill your ministry I said depression will not kill your ministry he took the hand of God he took God sending his angel to come and encourage Elijah. But today we are better than Elijah because we have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. Amen. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. Glory to God. Lift up your hand and say, my father, my God, I receive the Holy Spirit and the comfort of the Holy Spirit all the days of my life. So it is important for us to have a good relationship with the Holy Spirit if you are going to overcome the spirit of depression. Because it is the Holy Spirit's work to comfort us, to console us, to encourage us, to keep us, you know, lightened up and encouraged. Amen. Hey, may the Lord give you the Holy Spirit today. May the Lord use the Holy Spirit to comfort you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the spirit of peace. Receive the spirit of joy. In the mighty name of the Lord. Mm. But it is also very important. When people. Are depressed. Try to be nice to them. Try to do what? Try to be nice to them. When, people, when you notice somebody is depressed. Don't judge them. Even God never judged uh, Elijah. Yes, yes. Yeah. When David, not David, when Moses um, became angry, because there is difference. There is a difference between anger and depression. Somebody can be angry and and not depressed, and somebody can be depressed but they are not angry. Yeah, you see the difference. Yes, anger is just irritation of the spirit, but. Uh, depression is worry. The, the, your mental worry. Mental worry. So you can be depressed. But you are not angry. When Moses was angry. When he came back from the mountain. And found the people rebelling against God. And worshipping an idol. He was so angry. He wasn't depressed. He was so angry. Until he dropped the Bible. You remember that? What happened to him? God punished him for that. He told him, now you are going to make your own Bible. You are going to make your own tablet. Because you have dropped mine, now you are going to make your own. And return to the mountain for another 40 days. I will speak to you what to write. Before, God himself prepared a tablet and he wrote it. But this time, uh, he had to do, him, to do it himself. 
That was punishment from God. You remember even, he was not able to go to the promised land because he was angry and God punished him because of that anger. When he was commanded by God, go and speak to the rock. It will produce water. And because of his hunger, he, he, he hit it. And because of that, God said, because you've not honored me in front of the people, then you will not even see the promised land because of anger. But when God meets a man that is depressed, depressed because of doing ministry for a very long time and nothing seemed to be happening, he doesn't he doesn't uh, punish this man. He encourages him. Actually, he sends an angel with some food and some drink. Hallelujah. May the Lord encourage you today. Oh, I say, may the Lord send his angel to encourage you today. May the Lord send people who are going to be nice to you. May God send people who are going to bless you. May God send people who are going to stand with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So when people are depressed, what they need is somebody to be nice to them. People to stand with them. People to bless them. Hallelujah. May God send people who are going to understand that. People that are going to understand you. People that are going to understand what you are going through. May the Lord send the Holy Spirit to comfort you, to encourage you, and to strengthen you.